Hi, welcome to our third probability video for the Praxis 2 exam. Also useful for probability in general, but, but anyway, so, so this is for Praxis 2. The 0061 exam. Zero, zero, so, oh, and the phone's ringing. One moment. Okay, so this problem says the box contains 51 by 1 inch wooden tiles, numbering, or with, yeah, I missed a word in there, with numbers 1 through 50. And they're just saying that to establish that all these tiles are more or less the same, right? You don't want a, a, a box containing one tile this large, one tile that large, because, for obvious reasons, I guess. Um, Sure, there there are two tiles, but your chance of gaining this big tile is more likely, oops, than gaining this small tile, even though there are only two. Why? Because one is larger than the other. So you want to always establish that they're the same size. It says if one tile is drawn at random from the box, what is the probability that the number on the tile is a prime number? Great. That's a fun question. My approach to this is is just to list prime numbers, right? One is not a prime number, right? For the somewhat obvious reason, you could say that uh, a prime number is a number with with two f different factors, one and itself, right? And the only factors of one are one and itself. Well, that doesn't satisfy a definition. But also, then why you know why define it that way? Well, if we let one be prime, then primes lose lots of their special properties. Uh, special um, properties that define them because one is the identity right and the multiplicative identity and that and that just has so many implications if you mix it in with the primes we kind of lose some interesting properties so we don't mix it one is not prime I'll write that one is not prime I guess there are two ways to approach this you can use my technique of just I start writing the numbers between one and a fifty one and one and fifty and just leave the leave the non-prime ones out, like like four. That's that's not prime. And then five, that's prime, and, and six, that's not prime. Seven, that's prime, right? Eight, that's not prime. Nine, that's not prime. What am I doing? <laughs> right, because the factors of nine are three and three. Ten, that's not prime, because the factors of ten are, are five, two, and ten. Eleven, that's prime. Oops. Eleven is prime. 12 is not prime, it's a multiple of 6. 13 is prime, and notice that, I mean, 12 is a multiple of 6, and right next to it are two primes. 6 is a multiple of 6, and 5 and 7 are two primes. It doesn't always work, right, but but it helps us out. Like 14, 15, 16 are not prime, but 18 is not prime, but 17 and 19 are, and they're right by um, 18, which is a multiple of 6. Um, you can do it this way, and that's the way I like doing it. Um, I guess, but I guess we can also try other techniques, right? We can say let's write all the multiples of two from from one through fifty. So two, four, right? Or we can write all the numbers out: two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and you get the point. So we could write them all out and then just cross out multiples of factors like 2. Well, all of these are not going to be prime because 2 is a factor of all of these even numbers. Right, so so even numbers go. Except for, what am I doing? Except for 2. 2 is the first prime. And as far as I know, the only even prime. So 2 is prime because it has no other factors except for 1 in itself, but 4 and 6 and 8, 10, all these numbers Right, the even numbers are all not prime, and we're only looking for the prime numbers. So, it's, and that gets rid of a lot of the numbers right from the start. All right, it's a nice way of just cutting this list down. Thirty-six. I think I have thirty-eight. That's even. I think I got all of them. Now, what about three? Well, three is prime. Yay! Two and three are both prime. We we'll circle them. Multiples of three are not. Five, seven, not nine. There's a multiple of three. 15 is a multiple of 3, 21 is a multiple of 3, 27 is a multiple of 3, 33 is a multiple of 3, 39 is a multiple of 3, and any more, 45 is a multiple of 3, 
and that's it. Great, five, that's, that's prime. Any multiples of five left? Nope. Seven, that's prime, and let's see if we have any multiples of seven. Eleven is not a multiple of seven. Seventeen is not, nineteen is not, twenty-three, nope, twenty-five, twenty-nine, nope, twenty, twenty, thirty-one, thirty-five, thirty-seven, thirty-five is, right, seven times five, that's out. Forty-nine is a multiple of seven. Um, Forty-two is already taken, okay. Now, eleven is prime. Multiples of eleven, I don't see any here. Okay, so 11's good, it's prime. 13, 26, 39, right, and that's it. Prime, 17 is prime. 34 is also not prime. Doubling 17, sort of canceled out. 19 is prime. 23 is prime. 25, how did I miss that one? That's a multiple of 5. That's not prime. 29, is that prime? Yes, right? 29, 31, that's prime. Um, 37, that's prime. 41, all I'm doing to double check is I look at 37, I look at the factors before it, and none of them go into it, so it's prime. 43 is prime, and 47 is prime. Wow, so those are the prime numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, wait, <laughs> 4, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. There are 15 prime numbers out of 50. And if we reduce that, you can divide both numerator and denominator by 5, and we get 3 out of 10, which is our answer. Now that might have been inefficient, but I noticed that with a question like this from counting, I'm on, it's on a test, I have a tendency to rush or skip so I like this method because I'm just counting multiples, and that's not very taxing on my mind. And I mean, the other way, the other approach might be a little bit faster. I'm sure there are other approaches as well, as well, which I could explore later. But here it's just either listing out all the numbers through two and fifty and crossing out multiples, or just writing the numbers out and asking yourself what are the factors of this number, and then keep going. And a lot of these are multiple, just around the multiples of six, like seventeen and nineteen are right above. Are right above 18, and, th and they're both prime. 23 is right by 24, and it's prime, right? And 30, here's 30, surrounded by two prime numbers, the multiple of 6. 37, right by another multiple of 6. 41 and 43, both hugging, I think, a multiple of 6, right? 42, yep. Um, and 47, right by 48. And actually, there's a little bit of a pattern there. I wonder how far this holds, but on this multiple of 6, it's surrounded by two primes. On the next multiple of 6, there's one prime. On the next multiple of 6, there's two primes. And on the next multiple of 6, right, there's one prime. And on the next multiple of 6, there's two primes around it. And the next multiple of 6 after that, right, where is it? 42, 48, there's one prime. And also, let's see, this prime, this multiple of 6, the prime is below it. The next single multiple of 6, the prime is above it. The next uh, multiple of 6, the prime is below it, and so forth. So I wonder, I think these multiples of 6's will always hug a prime number. I'm wondering how far that goes. Pretty cool stuff. Let's look at one more problem in this video. A civic club has 100 members. Yeah, usually a civic club doesn't matter. If we're forming a committee, the order doesn't matter. We're probably dealing with combinations. So there are 100 people. And the committee of three members is to be selected to attend a natural, a national conference. So we got a hundred people, and we're combining them into groups of three, so that we have a group of three. And we want to know if the committee members are selected at random. What is the probability of any particular committee of three people is chosen to attend the national conference? Which one of these represents this possibility? Well, I mean, B is out, because that's one over the permutations of three people. We don't want to do that, because let's say we have, um, I don't know, Bob, Sue, and Tim. If I chose those three people and I'm counting permutations, that would mean that, that all these, there's six combinations here, right? Any, any order I write, it would mean that I've, I'm, I'm making a new committee. But in fact... All, all I'm really doing 
is picking the same people in a different order, which ultimately does not matter, right? If I pick Bob and then Tim and then the S, I can't remember what I called the S, that's the same thing as Bob and then S. They're all the same. This is all one thing. So that's why we're dealing with combinations, not permutations, because this would count as one combination of three people. So I, I think the answer here is that if a particular committee of three people is chosen, well, that's that's one particular committee out of all the possibilities, so the answer is A.